Let me ask for two volunteers. Who wants to pray? One can start and the other one finish. Okay. And who wants to go second? Who will finish? Okay. All right, Steph. Father, thank you that we can gather here together and pray for those who are here tonight for whatever reason, if it's sickness or sadness or being away. You just lift up our dear church members, Father, our family, the family of believers. We thank you for everyone that are here tonight, Father, that we can gather as believers and, and encourage one another and, and just enjoy each other's company. And Father, we just praise you for what you're doing in our church family's life and in their building and in our spiritual lives. And I just pray that we remain open and faithful to that. We just thank you, Father, for the blessings that, that we have in, in each other, in how we interact with each other, and how that those are blessings. And just, again, Father, we just praise you and thank you for, for how you work and work in our lives. In Christ's name I pray. Lord, thank you for giving us today to come to hear your word tonight. We really are thankful tonight. I pray, Lord, that we get put on the heart that we will see the Lord. And I ask you to be the one on our prayers that we lift them up to you. And I ask you to thank you for giving us traveling mercy to be here. And I ask you to give us traveling mercy as we are here that we'll meet again. I ask you to take care of each and every one of us. Be with those in the hospital and the nursing home. And I ask you to be with the pastor and his family, and be with you and his family that is here, and be with those that could not make it tonight, but we know that they are praise your name too. Amen. Amen. All right. You can be seated. <clears throat> Look in the First Corinthians tonight, <clears throat> chapter twelve. Throughout to my um, <clears throat> educational pursuits and studies. Um, I've read several books about uh, about the church. <clears throat> most of them, most of the books are um, they support each other, but they might not be all the same passage. Um, but they uh, complement each other, and I, I feel like some books are better than others. Um, I feel like there's a lot of good authors out there that talk about the church in different ways. Um, much like the matter of prayer, if you think about the subject matter of prayer, um, <clears throat> several hundred, probably thousands, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> probably thousands of volumes of works on prayer. I, I still like the old ones uh, that, I, that, I'm re that I go through now, occasionally. Um, about prayer. Um, but when you think about the church in itself, again, there's, there's a lot of good reading out there about church and, and, and as, a, as, a, as a, not as a thing, but as a, an organism, if you will. But one of the, good, one of the greatest things that you see uh, comes out of Scripture, especially when you start reading and you kind of follow the evolving church uh, through the book of Acts. And then when what you see in the book of Acts translates into the letters, the letters of Paul, the epistles. You see those individual letters. You see them in, in, in Acts, the, the actual historical part where, where Paul starts the church. And then you see the letters outside of that. <clears throat> when you read about the church, again, has an amazing beginning, powerful start, 
Uh, one, again, like I said Sunday, one that continues even to today. Here in chapter 12, <clears throat> this is more of a, a part of where the church or how the church is, <clears throat> is put together. Um, <clears throat> how the church how the church is organized, I guess, what it does and how it does it. And so I'm going to ask uh, here in just a little bit, if you'll gather, if you'll get together in groups of three, just get three groups. And then I guess we can do that. Can we still do some separate things? Okay. Uh, but I'll ask you to get in groups of three, maybe just three groups if, if possible. Um, if, if we can do that much, or at least two. So um, I want to ask you to do something. But here in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> I want to start at verse 12. <clears throat> this is a little bit past the giftedness, uh, the, the spiritual gifts, but I just kind of want to just dive into uh, verse 12, chapter 12. <clears throat> and it says, For as the body is one and has many parts and all the parts of that body though many are one body so also is Christ for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body whether Jews or Greeks whether slaves or free and we were all made to drink of one spirit so the body is not one part but many if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, <clears throat> I don't belong to the body. In spite of all this, it still belongs to the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body. In spite of all this, in spite of this, it still belongs to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? <clears throat> I, I like this illustration because uh, John MacArthur writes uh, commercial time. <laughs> <clears throat> That's all right. <clears throat> but when you, when he writes this book, he writes it from the very fabric of a, a human body and he takes every part kind of separates it into parts and then talks about their function uh, you know the muscles the skeletal system um, the cardiovascular system um, <clears throat> pulmonary all those things um, the body parts in general like the legs and the arms and everything the head he takes the body apart and shows us how magnificent God is in putting that human body together. And then he gets that and, and takes it and again breaks it apart. And he shows this, this passage and how the body relates to the church. <clears throat> and when, 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 if, you, if you've never read that... Um, it's 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 a it's a great it's an old book, but it's one that's well, well worth the reading, because again it talks about the church in light of what we are physically and what the church does, and so he uses the background of this passage uh, to talk about uh, the body itself, and so <clears throat> as we as we think about uh, what this passage is talking about, the body itself. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just do two groups. If, you're, if there's just three, it's all right. If there's four, that's fine. But I want you to divide up into a group. And um, uh, Chris, if you'll get some chairs and just make a little circle right over there by the water, and then we'll get, we'll get the group over here that's in the soft chairs, the luxury suite, and that, that will be a group over here. So uh, three or four in a group, just go ahead and make yourself uh, – get together and I'm going to give you your assignment real quick, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> so two groups. <clears throat> right 
Miranda, you want to get in this with the girls? Gather over here. <clears throat> Me some balance on this, me some balance on this side. <laughs> somebody unknown, y'all wanna, Mary Jo, you wanna stay over there and somebody, Kelly, you wanna come over here? <clears throat> Okay, group over here. <clears throat> this is this is. I'm gonna give you a body part. What you'll do, and the same thing with the other group here. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you a body part or a function, and I want you to talk about it. What what it is, what you think it does. You don't have to Google anything scientifically, but you know, because because we know the basis or the basics of bodily functions. So, uh, but when I give that to you, I want you to talk about it. And how, how does that relate to the church, okay? So this group over here, uh, you're going to do the skeletal system, the bones, okay? That's your, that's your body function. What does it do? How come we have bones, everything else? And then again, how does it relate to the church, okay? So that's, that's going to be your discussion topic. And I'll give you about 10 minutes to work through that and then I'll ask you some questions okay all right this group over here <clears throat> your body part is the legs legs okay so a little bit different than that there's there's a big function bones but yours is just legs in general what why why do we have legs and how does it relate to the church okay so about 10 minutes to discuss it and then I'll give you some, I'll ask you some questions All right, you've had your uh, group time together, and um, we'll let the uh, we'll let the leg group go first. Okay, so tell me a little bit what you discussed, or maybe something different, something maybe you discovered. Give us a synopsis of what y'all talked about. Who's your spokesman? <coughs> Kelly. <coughs> is to get people in the church but to get people in the church sometimes we have to go out we have to put movement to um, essentially like our actions basically in our in our teaching so like going out into the people that we just come in contact with continually and building those relationships and going to people um, and then Miranda brought up the story um, of the lame man who wasn't able to walk um, and how his friends were essentially his legs to bring him to ultimately the goal, which is Jesus. Um, and how uh, some people, like if they're having a hard time or something like that, then we can just bring them to Christ um, and encourage each other and how it's essential basically for functioning body is the legs. So. And that a church could be lame for whatever reason. Okay. <clears throat> what about pain in the legs? What cause what can be a cause of or what can happen <clears throat> to cause pain? Physically. <clears throat> Pull a muscle, strain, neuropathy. Okay. Unhealthy living. You ever catch your little toe on the corner of a chair or something? 
That's just a little bitty piece of toe, but can cause great pain, right? <clears throat> How would that relate to the church? Like an accident or things like that. Not being careful. Yeah, not being careful or even just, sometimes it's just, you know, accidents <coughs> happen, but just bad things can happen, but it can throw people, throw the church, into some, maybe even a little turmoil, but if nothing's done about it, you know, it could grow into something bigger. Like, <coughs> you think of this movie I watched, I can't even remember the name of it. And this guy, he's like this real big strong man, it's like a true story, and then he, he could like punch a, a big nail through a board and he did that and he hit his leg and then someone goes oh let me pour this some kind of alcoholic drink on his leg just to clean it and he said oh I'm, you know strong and it ended up you know you see him later he's limping and going along and ends up losing his leg and then dying but you think oh you know like one small thing and not even caring for it like um, you know, if you don't, you're not attentive to something, then it could cause greater harm, and that can happen too in the, in the body, in the leg, you, it could lame you, it could do more. Kendall made a point that we, uh, the legs help us to balance, or we use them for balance, and I think that's what we, we want, ultimately. Maybe we've all kind of struggled with something, you know, uh, physically trying to walk and just some, the rock in your shoe will make you uh, walk funny. But just striving for that balance and knowing, knowing what you need to do, everything that Jennifer said and said. Okay. Striving for that balance. Okay, good. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> the reason I talked about the little toe sometimes is because we don't think much about it until it hurts. It could be an ingrown nail or corner of a chair. You hit that little toe and it just feels like it just ripped off. But, you know, sometimes if, when you think about it in terms of, of, of the body, <clears throat> it sends great pain throughout. And uh, much like a church, there are times when Maybe within our church body, there could be a pain that we might not know about. It goes unnoticed, maybe. And I think that's good that we, we have a prayer system. We, we, we ask for prayers, maybe people we don't know or what they may be going through. And it's important to consider every part of the body. And uh, like, I, I like y'all's uh, application and... Uh, Good, good lessons from that. Okay, good, good work. All right, the skeletal. Who's your spokesman? <clears throat> Somebody's pointing at Chris. <clears throat> all right, Chris. Uh, well, they, had, they all had great points, and I think the one thing we can all agree on is the structure of the whole body and <clears throat> affects the heart, the internal organs. It affects, you know your brain and uh, structure is coming up. You got the pasture, you got the trot, you got the pasture, um, your deacons, your women's leaders, your men's leaders, on down to the congregation. And without your skeletal system, you would be basically a block and destroy. And you, uh,
great points. <clears throat> um, when you think about it, the skeletal part and just the legs itself. There's other, you know, there's other ones too, but they are complementary. They support each other, protect each other, but they're also susceptible to injury, uh, much like a church. You know, the, you know, again, he says, for as the body is one and has many parts, all the parts of that body, though, though, though many are one body, so also in Christ. We're susceptible to the world, its pressures, but that's where our fellowship, <clears throat> that's where our doctrine, that's where our worship, all those things, what we talked about Sunday, where all those things come together to keep us healthy. Uh, <clears throat> you know, like somebody mentioned neuropathy. You know, that fortunately, fortunately, you know, with me being diabetic, um, I, I haven't had that experience and I don't want to, you know, because my doctors keep asking me, you know, is there any sharp pains that you feel? I said, no, not there. I don't want to be there, but they just tell me to watch it or watch your feet. They, they say, keep an eye on your feet. So almost every night I'm looking at my feet. I got dry feet sometimes and put lotion on them and just keep them soft, you know. But even the skeletal system, <clears throat> um, I've never had a broken bone in my body. In all these years, I've never had a broken bone. But I've seen people <clears throat> where it's sticking out, you know, and just, it, it, it's, it's horrible, it's painful. Um, a couple nights ago, or a couple, probably about a couple weeks ago now, I was having a dream, <clears throat> and uh, in my dream, I broke my leg, and I could, I could feel, I, I could see the bone sticking out of my leg. But what I, what, what I was doing was I was actually having a dream that my leg was broken, but I was having a cramp in real life, you know, and it, and it woke me up because I, I had that pain in my leg. And I, again, I was dreaming that it was broken, but it was simply a cramp. Well, the scriptures again say here, again, as the body is one and has many parts and all the parts of that body, though many are one body, so also is Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So the body is not one part, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I don't belong to the body, in spite of all this, it still belongs to the body. If the ear should say, because I'm not of the eye, I am not the eye, I don't belong in the body, in spite of all this, it still belongs to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? All those things as we look at it in relation to the church <clears throat> gives us practical lessons on self-care, fellowship care, church family care. And that's kind of what we're, uh, we're going to be doing uh, this Sunday. Uh, my family and I are going to go down to visit with Jeremy and Tracy and, and Aaron Sunday at, down at Sasakwa. So we're, going, we're starting to make our rounds to the families <clears throat> because I, 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 just have a, I just have a deep heart for every family that's here. Might not know everything, I'm not, I, and I'm not on a quest to know everything, but what we can share together just, you know, maybe privately or whatever, uh, just talking to folks and getting to know our church family better. Uh, that's what we're beginning to do, and, and then Sunday we'll be we'll be with them, uh, and so and then maybe a couple weeks we'll get somebody else. We'll get another family that will say, "Hey, guys, come over here. We'll 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 get together, or whatever, on on that Sunday afternoon." But here's the here's the important thing. <clears throat> if you look here at the verse 18, this is kind of like the the whip. The whip topping on top of the pie. You know, pie is good enough, but man, it seems like with whip topping, it makes it even better. If you look at verse 18, I think it's 18. Yeah, 18. <clears throat> because even though we may have different callings, we may have different responsibilities, we may even have different insights into situations. We have a giftedness about ourselves that make that 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 could make us react to certain things because of our giftedness. 
you know, something happens, we, we, we may have people with strong faith. There may be some that are uh, just inclined to say, let's do it, you know, or, well, we, let, let, let's make sure we have, we count the cost. You know, there's different giftedness about things. Or, I don't have much, but I want to help. I can do things. I can, I can, I can um, I'm carpentry related, or I, I can do these things. We all have a giftedness about us. But here's, here's, the, here's that important uh, part right here in verse 18. But it says, but now, with all the body, talking about the body, he says, but now God has placed each one of the parts in one body just as he wanted. I think that's an amazing statement, Brother Tim. Even though we may have different functions, we may have different callings, we may have different giftedness, God is the one who has placed us within the body of Indian Nations Baptist Church. And I think that's, that, that's, that's something to chew on tonight. He has put you right where you are. He has put you where you are going to be the most effective. You know, can you, <clears throat> there, was a, there, was a, there was an old movie way back. This guy named Rosie Greer. Um, and I can't remember the other guy. But it was, I think it was called The Man with Two Heads. Anybody remember that old movie back in the late 60s or 70s? Uh, and they were, I, I, all I can remember is that, you know, they, they did something and they, you know, a black man and a white man with, with, a, with you know, two heads, this, this thing with two heads. And it, it, at first, when I first saw it as a, as a kid, it kind of scared me, you know, because I, 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 I never saw a show like that. And that's, that, that kind of tells you how old I am because that, that was the level of our horror movies back then. But a man with two heads, you know, kind of creepy. You know, you had bad dreams about things like that. But when you, when, when, when you think about the body itself, <clears throat> we have that giftedness. We have that ability. We have, the, we have the interconnectedness, not with just like sinew or muscles or tendons and ligaments. We have it through the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to walk in difficult times, to be our support, to be that, that part that kneels and, and sometimes the kneeling gets difficult on your knees, you know. You know, we <clears throat> as I as I get older, you know, sometimes I, I have to do things on to my mower where I have to get on my knees or I have to lay down and work on my mowers or, or cars and things and, and sometimes it's just a little bit difficult to get up. And then it hurts for a while until you get, you know, get a little bit more relaxed. But again, the church in itself as he speaks about the body, it's important to understand God has placed each one of the parts in the, in the body just as he wanted. So don't ever feel like you're unimportant. Let's make our family as they come, as we come together on Sunday, not to feel less important because maybe they don't, they're not a deacon. Let's not us make them feel less important because maybe, maybe they don't give as much as somebody else does. Never let us get to that point where we look at the body and say, my arm's better than this other one. Or I got a bigger brain or you know, whatever it may be. Muscled up. Let us all think of one, everybody, our body as one and as one in the Lord. Again, I love that little, that little passage, but God, but God has placed each one of the parts in the body just as He wanted. Or just in one verse, or one passage, or one version, it says, just as He pleased, just as it pleased God, He has put us where we are in the church. Great truth there when we consider all that we've talked about in the body of Christ. Good stuff, isn't it? There's other parts, you know, that you know that that I read about. And again, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I had read before was a, a, a again, it was a John MacArthur book long a ways back. So, but um, consider those things as we consider our church and the strength of it, um, its health, and um, and just what it does to honor and praise God. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your love for us, and we thank you for how you abide with us. We thank you for how you provide. Lord, we just thank you that you are a God of miracles, that you are a God of 
just loving your people. Lord, and I thank you that we, we have a lot of prayer requests that come our way. People mention just almost day by day new requests for people to pray, for our church to pray. It's encouraging to see and to hear my indication ring on my phone just to go off. And I know it's people praying. People are saying, I'm praying, I'm praying, we're praying for you. It's encouraging to hear that. And Father, as we just continue to bind together, we pray that our focus would be on you. And that our message, our legs would be the gospel. And Lord, that our, our structure, our, our skeletal system will be our strength to support what we do, our doctrine, our teaching. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for, Lord, just, just the great and precious promises that are ours as we move forward. Thank you for loving us now. And thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen.